Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna look at how we correctly size a hot tub pump. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna look at how we correctly size a hot tub pump. Now there's two scenarios that you might need. Firstly, you might be replacing a pump in your existing hot tub and you want to know what size to put in, so we'll look at that. Secondly, you might be designing, hopefully with my help, a brand new hot tub, and we'll look at how we can correctly size the hot tub pump for that as well. Now, before we get going, great opportunity, as always, to say if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Give me a like, hit me up in the comments with any questions that you've got, and don't forget to press that bell icon as well. That way you'll get notified when my videos go live. I put two long form videos out every single week and a whole bunch of shorts as well. So there's loads of free content out there on my channel to help you with your DIY hot tubs and plunge pools. Okay, so let's start with if you're replacing a hot tub pump on your hot tub, how do you know what size you need? Well, firstly, the general rule is you wanna swap exactly like for like. So. The first place you're gonna go is on top of the pump. There is usually a label, pretty straightforward stuff here. And on that label, generally you will find a model, you will find a make, you'll find a horsepower. And that is what you're gonna Google and you'll then find a supplier that can supply you exactly the same pump. Now, what if you can't find that information? Well. There's usually a label somewhere, even if the model number's worn off, there'll be something there that tells you how much current the pump actually draws. So that should be your first port of call. So by the current, we can gauge roughly, pretty precisely to be honest, the amount of horsepower that it, the pump generates. From there, we'll then need to know something like the inlet and outlet size. So whether it's two inch, two and a half inch, a mixture of the two, even one and a half inch on some of the circulation pumps, that can help us identify which pump it is. And lastly, the frame size so is the distance between the bolts or the holes for the bolts that you'll find at the bottom of your pump. Now, if they're larger than four inch, then it's a 56 frame. If it's smaller than four inch, then it's a 48 frame. So that helps us as well identify which pump you need. So you're always looking to do like for like, so you're not looking to swap a, a two horsepower for a three horsepower. There's a reason that your tub would have been designed with that two horsepower pump. So you just gotta make sure that we identify the right pump and then it's correctly sized for that replacement. Now, what I would say is when you are replacing a pump, make sure you replace the O-ring. So that's the little black rubber ring that you'll find inside of the union. And that just helps prevent leaks in the future. They do wear out over time, they get hard and they break up and that's when you get a leak on the union. So when you replace the pump, just make sure you replace one of those as well. And if you are struggling, you know, do get in touch, hit me up in the comments, contact me through the website and I'll see how I can help you with replacing that pump. Okay, so now we're gonna move on and we're gonna look at how we correctly size a hot tub pump for a new build or a design. And before we go there, let's take a look at some of the misconceptions that surround the size of hot tub pumps. Misconception number one, putting in a bigger pump solves all of your flow problems. No. That's not the case. It can in some cases. However, nine times out of 10, it will be something else. So just putting in a larger pump into the system will, as I said, nine times out of 10, not solve your flow problems on your jets. Misconception number two, increasing the size of the pump allows you to take the control room even further away from the hot tub. Sort of, however, again, generally, it is more than just the pump as we will take a look at. So no, increasing the pump size will not on its own necessarily help the flow rates into your hot tub if that control room is being moved further and further away. And misconception number three, 
I can add load more jets if I increase the size of the pump. Again, no, you can't. It's not how it works. Each jet has a fixed amount of flow. Each pump has a maximum amount of flow. And whether you start and finish with that maximum depends what we have in between in terms of pumps, fittings, fixtures, and we'll take a look at that very shortly. However, you will at some point max out even the biggest pump available if you're putting loads and loads of jets in there. So you do need to do some calculations. You can't just continually add jets and expect to be able to put in a large pump and it will just work. There is somewhat of a science to it, or a small amount of physics, and we'll take a look at that shortly. Okay, so with the misconceptions out of the way, let's get on and take a look at how pipe size actually affects the size of pump that we, we actually need. So what do I mean by that? Well, pipes come in different sizes. With hot tubs, it's generally one and a half, two inch, two and a half inch, uh, even three inch we, we use as well. These are the, the general pipe sizes. And I'll put a link underneath the video to uh, a article that I have that explains all about the different pipes and pipe sizes that are involved in building your own hot tub. So what I'm gonna do now is show or explain an example where all we're gonna do is we're gonna change the pipe size on a, a run of pipe to a fictitious hot tub here. And we're gonna see how that impacts the actual selection of the pump. So here's a scenario. We have a hot tub. We have a hot tub with 10 jets. The hot tub needs 100 gallons per minute. Each jet requires 10 gallons per minute. Simple, 10 by 10. And our control room is gonna be 50 feet away. So I'm gonna have 50 feet to the hot tub and we're gonna have 50 feet back to the pump, okay, of pipe in between. And what we're gonna look at now is how the flow rates can be altered by using different pipe sizes and how important that actually is to the pump selection. So everything is constant in this example apart from the actual pipe size. So what I've done is I've added a, a, a few bends, a few joints. Uh, all of these things add to the, the, the total amount of water friction or total dynamic head, as it is known in the industry, which affects a pump's performance. So each time you add a bend, a T-piece, a ball valve, all of this has a different impact on the amount of total dynamic head. So for this example, all of these are constant and all that I'm changing is the size of pipe. So let's start with a one and a half inch pipe. On our example, the amount of total dynamic head, and you can see this in the table behind me here, is 76.46 feet. Now, if that changes to two inch, the total amount of head drops to 26.86 feet. Again, if we change that to a two and a half inch pipe run to and from, so that total 100 feet of pipe run, that drops to 14.39 feet. And finally, if we take that up to three inch pipe, that total amount of dynamic head drops to 8.35 feet. So as you can see, just by changing the size of the pipes to and from the control room in our example with everything else staying the same, and all we would do on each end is just drop those down to the two inch connections that we need for the, the water pipes, you can see the total amount of head or the, the amount of friction that is gonna be created can be dramatically dropped. So why is that important? Well, that's important when we combine that with the output of the pump and the flow rate that we need to power the jets. So let's jump and look at this table here. This table shows us some typical outputs of some typically sized pumps at different horsepowers and how the performance curves change with on the left hand side the amount of total dynamic head. So what do we see 
straight away. Straight away, we can see that with our example here, we're gonna struggle with even a five horsepower pump, which is a big pump, on one and a half inch pipes to actually get any level of flow with a total dynamic head of, of nearly 80 feet, which was our example. So you can see that the size of the pipe is really important because if we don't have the right amount of flow, then there's no way that our jets are gonna work. Now we can't just stick a bigger pump on there because you can see even the four, the five, at 80 feet, they're, they're not gonna work on one and a half inch pipe where we've got a total dynamic head of, a, of around that 80 feet mark, okay? So it's really, really important that we use the correct size of pipes between the hot tub and the control room because this is where most of the pipe friction or the total dynamic head is actually created. Okay, so let's take our example. I'm gonna actually move it up to 16 jets because that's more of a, a real world scenario. And it's also the amount of jets that are, are generally in my design, somewhere between 14 to 16 jets. So we'll use 16 jets and 100 gallons per minute. So again, we're looking at this table and we're looking at the impact of that total dynamic head on the amount of flow. So we can see that a one horsepower is not gonna get us there. Even on three inch pipe, a one horsepower pump is just not big enough. That will top out somewhere around the 140 gallons per minute, which would just about power the 14 jets, but I wouldn't want to chance it. So you can see that the amount of flow is actually really important. However, if we're sticking with that 160 gallons per minute target, we're on three inch pipe, you can see that a two horsepower pump would just about get me there. It's comfortable enough. However, in this scenario, I would use a three horsepower because it gives me a little bit extra just in case I need it with some added bends, twists, anything that I've not really allowed that's gonna impact my flow. So on our scenario here, with that 50 feet to and from, with the connections and the fittings that I've dropped into the example, I would select a three horsepower pump based on our requirements of 160 gallons per minute. I wouldn't use a four or a five because there is just simply too much pressure and it's, it's not needed. So as you can see, the size of the pump here is really, really affected by the amount of total dynamic head, which in turn is really, really affected by the actual size of pipe that we're using on that run to and from the hot tub. So sizing a pump is much more than just plucking a horsepower number out of thin air. We need to know the amount of flow we need from the jets. We need to know the total dynamic head and there's a load of calculators online that we can use for that. And we need to know what the output of the pump is as well. Having not enough flow is really difficult to fix. As you can see, we can't just up a pump size and hope that that's gonna fix it. So we really need to get this done at the planning stage. So if I can help you at all, please do get in touch. What happens is if we don't have enough flow, then we also get problems with the blower. So what we see in the hot tub is we would turn the blower on. The blower needs to be closer to the hot tub. It needs to be within 15 to 20 feet. Any further than that, the blower's come a little bit ineffective. So we're gonna have that blower closer to the hot tub anyway. But what we find is if we've not got enough flow, then the air is not being drawn into the gunite bodies by the process of venturi. So what happens? Well, we turn the blower on and it looks okay in the hot tub itself. We turn the jets on and slowly we'll see all of those bubbles slow down. They'll stop on some jets because what's actually happening is the water pump will work against the air blower and the water will be forced down the air lines. It works against the blower and the end result is it's really not happening in the hot tub itself. Worse than that, you will actually burn out the blower eventually as well. So having the correct flow, as you can see, is really, really important, not only for your hot tub to work, but also to protect the kit and, and not damage your electrical components. So can I help you with your DIY hot tub build, the design? Can I supply you any parts with your plunge pool? 
If I can, please do get in touch. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit me up in the comments. Get in touch via the website. Always happy to hear from you. As always, I appreciate the view. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.